Hello, so now we're at the point of chapter two where we are um, looking at strong versus weak entities and what an identifying relationship means. Um, so essentially a, a strong entity you can look at, you know, and you know, the example I usually give is, you know, you see a statue standing there. So if the statue can stand on its own and doesn't need any assistance, then it's a strong statue. If something needs to uh, prop up the statue, uh, you can consider the statue to be a weak statue. Um, kind of goes the same with entities. So if, if, when we talk about a strong entity, a strong entity can exist independently of other types of entities. Uh, for instance, if, if we have a customer um, and we don't have any business rules that say that a, that a customer has to be associated with something else, then all of its relationships are optional. And if they're optional, um, then that entity can stand on its own. Um, so it exists independently of other types of entities, and it has its own unique identifier. And again, you know, in diagramming, it has a single underline, uh, but typically, and in your projects that you're doing for the course, uh, these will be your system-generated uh, keys or identifiers. Um, so your strong entities have, have its own unique identifier. Uh, compared to that, a weak entity is dependent on either a strong entity uh, which is known as an identifying owner, uh, or multiple strong uh, entities. Uh, and it cannot exist on its own. It does not have uh, its own unique identifier. Uh, it only has partial identifiers from the strong entity entities it is related to. Um, and that partial identifier is underlined with double lines. Uh, the entity box has a double line in your ER assistant. You'll notice that it doesn't have a complete uh, double line uh, in the ER assistant. The corners are hashed. Um, so again, we, we've got a situation where we have uh, an entity that borrows it, a primary key from a strong entity. So for, existent, for, for an example, uh, we were talking about um, employees and their skills. Uh, so in that example, uh, we would use the employee ID, which is the primary key from the employee table, and we would match that up with the um, skill ID from the skill table to denote that a particular employee has a particular skill. Uh, so that's why uh, the weak entity will simply be borrowing uh, its uh, partial identifiers from the strong entities that it is associated with. And, of course, there is an, an identifying relationship which links the strong entities to the weak entities. So let's just take a quick look at, at an example. Uh, so here we've got an employee uh, and a dependent. Uh, so in this case we've got an employee which has its own uh, unique identifier. So there's the employee ID. Uh, and again, uh, uh, just another attribute, the employee name. Uh, the identifying relationship is a double line, uh, or uh, in the case of the uh, ER assistant, a bolded line. Um, so an employee carries a dependent, and then dependent name is the partial identifier. Uh, when we actually get down to the project uh, type of modeling, uh, we'll see that we'll actually need to use the employee ID in the dependent uh, entity, uh, and that's the weak entity. So the weak entity, I cannot, in other words, in this case, I cannot have a dependent unless I have an employee. Um, so therefore, a dependent cannot exist without an employee, therefore it is weak. All right. Uh, so there are other examples, but that is, for all intents and purposes, uh, strong and weak. Entities, and that is the end of that topic.